What's that? It'd be safe to use this time because you wouldn't get bleeding while you're trying to Right. The salicin won't cause abnormalities in the bleeding. And I prefer to actually use vitamin E and fish oil to keep the blood thin rather than a baby aspirin because it's healthier for you, healthier for your brain, and it doesn't have the, the bad effects. So now papain is one that's in papaya. When I had my pancreatitis, I was told to go to Hawaii, eat pa pineapple, papaya, and passion fruit. <laughs> and they're all loaded with anti-inflammatories. And it helped dissolve the uh, stone that was blocking my uh, common pancre pancreatic biliary duct and helped me get through the pancreatitis. And also, these helped with the inflammation, the the pain, all that kind of stuff. So they were very helpful. Uh, papaya is very concentrated in papain, especially the skins. And a lot of us don't eat the skins, but what they would do with the skins is they would apply them to heal the wounds, burns, rashes, bugs, bug stings, because they would actually draw out the toxins and break down the bad proteins that were causing a lot of the problems and it has enzymatic support for the intestine, stomach, and the pancreas. So very, very good for what's affecting us right now. Uh, it's also good for the liver. And so taking uh, papain is, is very good for you. And we have papaya-based enzymes somewhere here. At least we used to. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not seeing them, but. But there, there are actually enzymes they make from papaya, and it has the papain and some proteases. They say pineapple is nature's best complete digestive enzyme that there is. Yes, yes. Uh, bromelain, uh, papain, you know, the boswellia, curcumin, all of these in different combinations are good for you. And, you know, I'll talk about ginger very last because it's a very powerful, uh, good herb. Uh, so the health benefits of papain also, uh, it has a lot of compounds in it that aid in protecting the body from cellular damage caused by free radicals. And there's been lots of studies showing how good papain is for the body. And it also increases survival of probiotics that you take. So they found if they put it in yogurt, it keeps them alive longer. So it's, it's very good for that. And as you know, the, the better our digestion is, the more good probiotics we have, the healthier our brain will be and less inflammation our body will have. Okay, it also reduces bad bacteria infestations and it, it, they actually can add, a, add papain uh, to uh, keep food from spoiling as fast. Now ginger, we're going to talk about ginger a little bit. Uh, ginger is anti-inflammatory and it makes for a valuable tool for pain relief. 2001 research showed that ginger oil applied to the knee helps reduce inflammation and pain. Now also, they're do, they've done some studies about hip pain applying ginger oil to surf the surface leaf <laughs> will help with hip pain. Okay, so maybe that's our hidden link here. We need to use more ginger. And they found that women athletes taking three grams of ginger, which is about a half a teaspoon, or cinnamon, or both, uh, had significant decrease in muscle soreness and cramping. And ginger has been found to be as effective as ibuprofen in relieving pain from menstrual cramps in women. As my mom used when I was way back in the old days when I was a kid, she would make me a warm cup of milk and put about a half teaspoon of ginger in. I'd drink that and no more cramping. Yeah. You know, that's a remedy we use whenever somebody's got stomach flu, too. You yeah, take and awesome. put the ginger in, stir it up, and, and uh, put a little, little milk in it. Yeah. Interesting, but it would help with stomach flu. Uh, pain relieving potential of ginger appears to be far reaching. 
along with help for muscle and joint pain. It's been found to reduce the severity of migraine headaches. So, you know, if it's good for the stomach, it's good for the brain. As, Is the stomach our other brain anyway? Yeah. When you say you have a gut feeling. Yep. Our stomach is yes. our other brain, and uh, you know, anytime you help your stomach, you're helping your brain, your your intestines. Uh, there's a drug called sumatriptan that they used to give people shots of, and then they came out with a pill, and it you know would relieve migraine headaches. But they found ginger is as effective as that drug with no side effects. You know. They say fewer side effects on here, but I'm saying there's no side effects from ginger. The, if you do have side effects from ginger, it's because it's killing fungus and bad bacteria. Exactly. And when you kill fungus, they release aflatoxins and that causes some side effects. And so the, the main side effects from ginger is you're killing off the bad bugs. And you know, if, if you have effects from killing off fungus, you know, they can cause skin rashes and, and indigestion, those kind of things. So, and ginger actually helps with indigestion. So, uh, ginger enhances bronchodilation. And they've actually found in asthmatics, and now I believe this has to do with uh, its antifungal effects, because I believe asthma is caused by fungus. But anyway, they found if you gave kids or adults with asthma, ginger, in addition to the other asthma medications, they worked better. And I think it's because of the killing of the fungus and uh, anti-inflammatory effects. So it's a safe complement to current asthma medications on the market. Okay, the other things that I found help with inflammation is getting rid of bugs. Because bugs eat our tissues and cause our inflammatory cells to come in and have to repair the tissues. So getting rid of parasites, getting rid of fungus, getting rid of bacteria and atypical bacteria, you know, bad bacteria and virus in the body is very effective for helping with inflammation. And uh, so there's lots of good products on the market. Uh, you know, it's interesting as we're in flu season, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Lomadium, or Lomacium, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's a flower that grows up in Montana and Wyoming, and it was found to be very effective against the influenza viruses. So, uh, Lomadium. Would you spell that, please? L-O-M-A-T-I-U-M. And uh, it's put in a lot of ant antiviral remedies. Uh, another one, and the reason I'm mentioning these is we're in flu season. And uh, if you take these as a preventative, they also reduce inflammation. Now the other nice thing about these, the antivirals, is they pull viruses out of your DNA. Now, if you think about it, the genetically modified foods have used bacteria and virus as a means of placing DNA into the DNA of the plants and genetically modifying them. Now when they place these in there, they don't take them out. So when you eat genetically modified foods, you get these viruses and bacteria that help uh, make changes to your bacteria in your gut. And they also make changes to your cellular DNA. So, uh, that being said, it's, it's important to take antivirals to remove those things out of your DNA because they cause mutation, they cause breakages, they cause all kinds of problems. They cause your telomeres to even age quicker and break off worse. Now, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm being told right now that I need to teach you uh, the method of uh, strengthening your DNA. And so, you know, taking antivirals is good, taking herbs is good, but we are creative agents. We are aspects of God. We all have that spark of God within us to create things. Uh, three weeks ago, St. Jane and Germain came to me and said that I need to teach this method of uh, bringing about stronger DNA. 
Now, years and years ago, human beings, you know, and biblically speaking, could live up to a thousand years. You know, think of Methuselah and Moses and all these people. Actually, Moses was taken up, to, you know, and translated quickly. But, uh, you know, all the, the people in the Old Testament, and they could have kids in their hundreds. You know, they were fertile for a lot longer than we are. And the reason why is they had a full complement of DNA, which means they had 24 strands of DNA as opposed to our two strands we have today. And what they say happened is the humans actually interacted with other uh, beings, and that's what caused a lot of the, the problems with our DNA. And we end up only having two strands of DNA now, which is very fragile and susceptible to radiation, chemicals, all kinds of stuff. So St. Germain came to me and said that we are manifestors. We can actually take uh, spiritual energy and create into the physical stronger DNA. And he talked about how, how to do this meditation. And he said, you, you basically, and you don't have to sit, you don't have to stand, you can be laying, you can be in any position you want, but you visualize yourself connecting to the earth and bringing the magma energy, which is a red, golden, you know, flowing, I don't know if you've seen magma before, but it's, it's very dark red, and sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's golden. Called? What? Magma. Magma is the, 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 Flowing lava. It's on the news every night with pictures because Hawaii just decided yeah. to activate yeah, it. Yeah, my, my favorite pahoa is getting like yeah, destroyed right. or rebuilt, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Whichever end you're looking at. Yeah. So uh, you, you visualize that and bring it up into your creative chakra. Many of us have not used our creative chakras properly and uh, we rebuild them by bringing in these energies. And so we bring in the magma up into our, our uh, uh, sacral plexus, and then we bring in the golden white light from source, from God, whatever you believe, you bring it down into and through your heart with love and bring it down into the sacral plexus. And then you visualize a what they call the uh, orange flame of creation and ecstasy. And this orange flame, and I've got some uh, copies that a lady made, and I, I can make those of you who would like it a copy of this, uh, and you, you basically visualize this uh, orange flame and bring that into your creative chakra also. Then you ask the ch star children who are the keepers of all the DNA of the universe and ask them to bring the 11 other strand, the other 11 other double helixes, I should say, or 22 strands, because we've already got two, and add them to our complement of the, the single double strand DNA. So we'll have a 12 double helixes. And then St. Germain says you visualize those 12 double helixes and then you braid them. And you don't have to know how to braid them. I mean, most of you women know how to braid. I don't know how to braid. But uh, braid it into a rope structure that is a round, powerful, impenetrable, uh, invincible rope of DNA. And you place that DNA in every cell in your body, including your blood. Currently, our blood has no DNA. And when I went to medical school first, they said it lasted 120 days, our blood, without the DNA. Now our blood's only lasting anywhere from uh, 50 to 60 days. And so a lot of us are becoming anemic and tired and all kinds of problems because of all the chemicals and toxins in our body. So you visualize putting this DNA, this rope DNA, into every cell in your body, including your blood and your immune system lymphatic system all over and then you take and you visualize this impenetrable uh, this invincible indestructible DNA making indestructible proteins in your body and making it so all your cells your organelles your cell membrane gets regenerated in perfection 
and also makes it so the receptor sites are cleared of any toxins and your body cleans out and repairs and makes everything perfect. Now, he said to do this 12 times 12, which means 144 times, oh, wow. and it will manifest into the physical. So, and he said each level, each 12 times, it raises your body to another level. And by the time you raise it to that 12th level, uh, you'll be much healthier and not be affected by the radiation, the toxins, and all these things. It's kind of interesting, I received this just before I went to Fairfield, uh, Iowa, and I told them six months ago when they were being exposed with all these chemicals from the silos that Heartland had built, and believe it or not, they're desiccating plants now with more Roundup. So they, they have Roundup resistant plants, but if you increase the dose of the Roundup, it desiccates and kills off the Roundup ready plants even, because it's a denicide. And they found that desiccating it quicker, they can time their, their uh, time their harvest. They can even get another set of plants in if they do it, you know, right and or wrong, <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I told them six months ago. Hold on, just a sec. That I would bring them information on how they would be able to survive because every time they're harvesting this dust clouds of chemicals, the cambia, all of the 2,4-D, Roundup, it, it literally forms a dust and comes down on all the people living there and they're getting sick and sicker than heck. And uh, the answer was what St. Germain said, we're gonna have to become evolved. Evolve our bodies to the point where these chemicals, the radiation, everything that's happening to us doesn't affect us anymore because it's ubiquitous. It's throughout the Northern Hemisphere right now. And Fukushima is still spewing out radiation. So, you know, it's one of those things that it's gonna help us evolve. Okay, go ahead. Well, I just wondered how you have to do this within a specific amount of time. No, no. I mean, you can do it like Just do it whenever you remember. Uh, I actually made a CD and DVD about it. I haven't got them all made, but I made the, I made the, the original copy so if you would like a copy, I'll give it to the people who attended today for free. So, so anyway, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. This is pretty much all the information I'm supposed to present to you. Uh, if you want a copy of the slides, uh, we'd be glad to send it to your email uh, so you can read through it and know what what uh, you know we we actually have been talking about. You know. They found that all of these anti-inflammatories help with cancer. They help against cancer. And what's the, you know, second biggest cause of death, which may become the first cause of death this year, is cancer. And the first cause of death is heart disease, which is an inflammatory disease caused by bacteria and virus. So, what we talked about today will help with all this stuff. Just got a phone call for my good friend, her son-in-law, two weeks ago diagnosed with liver cancer and he died this morning. Two weeks ago? Two weeks. Oh, Half probably way. finding out about it just gave him a, an out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, yeah, sometimes when you just go that fast, like, I don't want to deal with this, but please he's take me. Than you are. <laughs> what? He was younger than you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there. you know, every day I look in the, yep. the obituaries and there's a lot younger people than me dying yeah. from cancer you know, and pancreatitis and everything. Well, Glenn Beck just came forth with the fact that he's very ill. It's been going to doctors for years and they can't find out. He'll curl up into a feeding position. His fingers will go like this. He's had his wife cut his shirt and tie his shoes. Yeah. Um, they don't know what it is. It's a neurotoxic disease I, caused this, I, by I, pesticides, herbicides, and all yeah. the crap, you know? And, you know, when, when I travel, I have to go out and buy good organic food and wash it off and cook it myself so I know what I'm getting into my body. But you know, if, if we do the, the meditation and perfect our cells, perfect our DNA and make it indestructible and help us withstand all this onslaught of chemicals and stuff, I think that's the answer because, you know, we get out there and, and 
you eat out, you have birthday parties, you have cake, you have sugars, you have ice cream, you know. And we, we have to live as human beings. And I think, truthfully, the answer is let's, let's evolve our DNA. So the way to live is to eat 